Everyone's saying OpenAI's new agent kit just killed N8N. So I built the same four agents in both platforms to find out if that's actually true. And the results are interesting. So let's dive in. All right, first up, the simplest possible agent, a chat agent that can search the web and answer questions. This is agent kit's home turf. So here's what it looks like. I've already built it. So let me show you what I had to do. The start trigger was already there. And then I had to add an agent. I added a system prompt to that agent i remembered to enable include chat history i chose a model i kept the reasoning effort as low and i clicked this plus icon and gave it the web search tool the output format is text so this takes less than two minutes to set up i didn't need any api keys because everything is already in openai's ecosystem so let's test this i'm going to hit preview Can you tell me about N8N? So the agent does its thing, it does its reasoning, and boom, a very detailed answer with sources. Amazing. Now let's head over to N8N. Here is that same web search agent, except this time I had to add a manual chat trigger, add an AI agent, give it a brain, set up the API key manually, give it memory, set that up, give it the Wikipedia tool, which is built into N8N, and then use the Tavoli tool and configure the API to actually give it real web search capability. All right, so let's test this out. Tell me about OpenAI's new agent kit. So it's gonna search Wikipedia, it searches Tavoli, and it comes back with an answer. Now, interestingly, the answer is not as detailed as agent kit's answer. And this took longer to set up. So the winner here is agent kit. Agent kit took less than two minutes, and Aiden took longer and provided a less detailed answer. So for simple chat agents with built-in tools, Agent Kit absolutely destroys N8N on speed and simplicity. You can spin up a working agent before you even finish setting up your first API key in N8N. And that's really what Agent Kit was designed for. Now let's go ahead and add some complexity. Agent number two, a RAG agent, starts with the same trigger, the same agent, except this time under tools, I've given it a vector store. So here's my vector store where I have have uploaded three PDFs of Alex Hormozzi's books. And yes, I have bought these as well. So loading the PDFs into OpenAI was fairly simple. All I had to do was upload the data and that's that. Close it. Here's the system prompt. You have access to a vector store containing all of Alex Hormozzi's books on marketing and sales. You are to retrieve information from the vector store and answer my queries in Alex Hormozzi's voice. That's it preview. I need some help. I need some help positioning my AI agency offer. So it's searching the files, compiling all that information and giving me a fairly detailed answer with citations from where it is in Alex Hormozzi's voice. And you can see that it actually cited information from all of the available sources. So that's pretty good. Now let's see the same thing in N8N. I'm gonna disconnect the chat trigger and bring it down to our RAG agent. Now in N8N, this actually requires multiple steps. First, we need to load the PDFs into a vector store. N8N does not support a vector store. So I had to set that up in Superbase. And I have another tutorial on how to do this in detail. I'll leave a link to that in the description so you can go ahead and check it out there i've set up a form in which i can upload the pdf files that then goes into the superbase vector store it's processed and loaded into the vector store so there's quite a few steps just to upload the files compared to agent kit where you just had to drag and drop the files and the second part is the retrieval agent it's an ai agent with access to that same vector store it queries the vector store, gets information, processes it, and gives it back to us. Let's go ahead and open chat, clear this up, and drop in that same query and see what it comes back to us with. So you'll see that it's querying the vector store, processing the information, and coming back to us. All right, so still fairly detailed with references as well, but I'm still gonna go ahead and say that Agent Kit's response was better and more detailed, plus N8N took longer to set up. But there's one key detail that we're missing here, and that's transparency. With N8N and Superbase, you have full access and visibility of the data store and how everything is chunked and stored. But in OpenAI, it's kind of a black box. I don't know how this is chunked, 
I don't know how this is split, it just worked. On the one hand, this is a lot easier to use, but on the other hand, you have less control. So that's a trade-off that you're going to have to decide on. But all in all, considering the speed and the ease of use and the output, Agent Kit wins again. So far, Agent Kit is two for two. Now let's up the complexity and try to build an email triage agent. Ideally, an email triage agent is going to monitor Gmail for new messages, classify them into categories, routes them wherever they need to go, updates a database somewhere, and replies automatically if needed. And these workflows are what businesses actually pay real money for. So here's what that looks like in N8N. This workflow fires whenever an email is received from Gmail. That email is then classified using AI into whether it's an invoice, a customer service request, a new lead, somebody offering you their services, a notification, or anything else. And depending on whatever that's categorized into, it's going to go into another AI agent, which is then going to take action either by logging it into a database, labeling the message, deleting the message, sending a reply, whatever that may be. So as you can see, this is a multi-step, multi-possibility agent that works as soon as an email is received from Gmail. Now let's see how we can build this in Agent Kit. In NADN, I'm triggering the workflow when a new email arrives, but there's no such trigger in Agent Kit. There's only the start option, which means the only way to trigger an Agent Kit workflow is by manually chatting with it. So this is kind of the deal breaker where N8N comes out a lot more powerful than Agent Kit. Agent Kit cannot be triggered by external events. No Gmail triggers, no webhook triggers, no schedule triggers, no form triggers. The only way to run the agent is to manually talk to it or to call it via their software development kit or SDK, which adds a lot more complexity, which we're not signing up for. So effectively, if I wanted to replicate the same N8N automation in Agent Kit, I would need to build a separate app that talks to this agent kit workflow. And for context, I've set this up by giving it an MCP server, which has access to my Gmail inbox. So while I can chat with my inbox and take actions through the chat interface, I cannot automate anything. So here, the winner is N8N. So even though the setup in N8N is a little bit complex, in Agent Kit, this is virtually impossible to do as of now. That's really the key difference. N8N builds autonomous agents. You can use any kind of trigger that's available and trigger an agentic workflow. With Agent Kit, the only way to trigger the workflow is to chat with it. The agents will respond when you talk to them. So if you're building an internal assistant for your team to chat with, Agent Kit is good. But if you need actual automation, agents that respond automatically to emails, process form submissions, monitor databases, send reports, that's where you need N8N. It's not that one is better or worse, they're just solving completely different problems. But there's one more level of complexity that we need to test is a multi-agent orchestration system. This is where we build not just one agent, but a team of specialized agents that work together. Here's how that looks like in N8N. This is a blog post writer orchestrator. This main agent has four sub-agents working for it. One agent determines the title and structure. One agent does the research for each section. One agent writes out each section. And a fourth agent generates the image for the orchestrator to assemble all of that and output the final written blog post. So I chat with the orchestrator and the orchestrator decides which agent to call and when, and everything is happening simultaneously. Let's see this in action. I'm gonna ask it to write a blog post about the history of Espresso. First, the orchestrator agent will call the title and structure agent and come back to me with suggestions for an outline. So we have a title, we have the structure with H2s and H3s. I'm happy with this, so I can just ask it to write it out. And now you'll see that the orchestrator agent will call the research agent. Once the research is done, it'll call the write section agent to write that. Then it'll come back to the research agent for the next section and so on and so forth until the entire blog post is written. Now this is a good proof of concept of one agent controlling multiple sub agents by itself. Let's see how this would work in agent kit. So here's another limitation. While I can build an agent with tools and these tools can be web search, MCPs, file search, vector stores, or even custom functions. Essentially what you get is a linear chain. An agent calls the tool, the tool returns the result, the agent continues, 
that output goes to the other agent this agent's output then goes to this agent which is finally shown to you over here and with n8n you can have a truly agentic workflow where agents are acting autonomously and taking actions on their own accord i tested this out by giving it the same topic and you'll see that it actually did a pretty decent job it did a lot of research and it came back with a well-written blog post, but the entire progression was linear. So I was not able to abstract the research into a specialized agent and the writing into a specialized agent. While the difference may not be that apparent with simple instructions, once these instructions get really complex, where you have a specific writing style that you want to mimic or specific frameworks that you want to follow, providing all of that information to a single agent, either one of these in this case, may end up overwhelming the language model. But with N8N, we can provide all of those instructions separately and let the orchestrator decide which agent to use where, and it'll come back to you with that final output as you want it. So for multi-agent systems and truly agentic workflows, N8N wins again. N8N effectively gives you agent teams with specialized roles, memory that spans across all of them, and an orchestrator or multiple orchestrators that coordinates everything. So this is the difference between building a solo consultant and building a consulting firm. And here is our ready blog post formatted with HTML with an image and covering more or less the same points that the OpenAI agent covered. So let's break down what we learned. Out of the four tests, we essentially have a tie. Agent kit does better for two and N8N does better for two. But that's missing the point because they're not really competing. So here's how you can choose. Use agent kit if you're building internal team chat tools, simple conversational assistance, quick prototypes to test ideas, or anything where your team team will manually trigger the agent and you're already all in on OpenAI's ecosystem. You'll have something working in minutes and for 80% of simple use cases, that's perfect. But use N8N if you need real automation that runs on events, agents that can work while you sleep, access to any AI model where you don't want to be locked into OpenAI, full visibility into what's happening, and production level systems for clients, complex multi-agent architectures, and integration with hundreds of different services. So the real answer is that agent kit isn't killing N8N. It's not even trying to. OpenAI built a tool for teams to quickly spin up internal chat agents with Without needing developers and N8N built a platform for developers and agencies to build sophisticated AI automation systems different tools different jobs so the question isn't which is better the question is what are you actually building if you found this helpful do remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more AI and automation content and if you want to level up in building AI agents and build your first automations and agents for your business or your clients, check out our exclusive school community where we do weekly calls, provide feedback, and do live monthly co-builds. You can find the link in the description below.